Peter Bassner, and this is Caitlin Saborn, and we're from Troop 11309 from Sterling, Massachusetts, and we're working to earn our silver award on rabies. Today we're here to interview Mr. Lou Massa, Animal Control Officer of Sterling, Massachusetts, and Dr. Detlinger from Sterling Veterinary Clinic. Our project is focused around rabies awareness and local pet owners. We have conducted a lot of research and determined it is very important to control rabies in our neighborhood. So let's get started. What is rabies? It's a good question. So rabies is a viral disease. It attacks the central nervous system of mammals. So the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. It's a virus that is considered to be zoonotic, which means it spreads from animals to people. It affects mammals. So mammals are any animal you can think of that has hair or fur that raises live young. Animals that don't get rabies would be reptiles, frogs, birds, and fish. So animals that can get rabies and do, cats, dogs, cattle, horses, foxes, coyotes, raccoons, and us. How is rabies transmitted? Rabies is transmitted through the biting animal's saliva. Basically, when the animal bites, it also, before it it starts moving through the, bite, the animal that it bit. It can stay dormant up to one month, it can up to three, um, even up to six months. Okay, but once it's, and the thing is, it matters how quickly it moves through the system, um, you know, how fast it reaches the brain basically. But once it starts moving, when it hits the brain, those are the, basically it's the end. Um, and you'll see the last signs um, basically, the an animal wandering like it's lost, um, you know, won't leave. Usually a normal wildlife raccoon, skunk, when you approach it, it will leave. If you know wild, the wildlife will not leave, you have a problem, basically. Not only is it transmitted through the saliva into a bite, but it can go through a fresh cut or a scratch. Yep. Also through the mucous membrane, so your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Um, th those are the ways that it's spread. What are the side effects and symptoms of rabies? So in people, initially the first sign usually is some sort of discomfort, either itching or prickling sensation around the bite. Then it progresses to flu-like symptoms, so malaise, fever, just general, you're tired. Then it spreads to neurologic signs, so seizures, agitation, coma, unfortunately, ultimately death. In animals, there are several different signs. It's important that if you think there's any exposure to rabies with yourself or your pet, you report it to either your physician, the animal control officer, or your veterinarian, depending on who's affected. In pets, it can look like anything. So as Lou said, sometimes it's just that they're animals that are usually aggressive are placid and come to approach you when they shouldn't. Sometimes they're aggressive and attack you. Any gamut of signs are possible, so it's really important that the exposure be reported. What animals are most likely to develop rabies? The most common animals to develop rabies in Massachusetts, the most common two are raccoons and skunks. Okay, those are most common because they're in your yards all the time. Uh, you do need to remember um, we are invading their habitat with all this construction and the house is going up. So where do they go? They're in our yards. Okay, other animals, foxes, woodchucks, um, Coyotes, deer. There's actually deer. a confirmed case in deer. Um, but the most common two are skunks and um, raccoons. We do actually often see a high percentage of bats that also get rabies, and bats are particularly challenging. If you find a bat in your room at night with your child, with an elderly person, it's flying around, that should be reported. The bat should be caught and tested, and the reason is Bats have very small claws and teeth, so they can bite you when you're asleep and you're not even aware of it. That's a particularly high risk um, and something that you should not take lightly. Is there a cure for rabies? So unfortunately, no, there is no cure. About 55,000 people a year actually die of rabies, usually um, Asia and Africa. 
there are only typically two or three deaths in the United States, and there really is no effective cure. Um, once signs are present, there's really not much to do but supportive care. The good thing is there's a lot of things that we can do if there's been an exposure to actually help prevent someone from getting rabies. So an injection of immunoglobulin is given, which is a blood product that carries antibodies to the rabies virus that helps the person build an immune response. And also vaccines are given, which help to stave the disease off. So the treatment is pretty much 100% effective if it's caught in time. But no, there's no cure. Have there been any rabid animals in Sterling? Yes, there has. Um, there has so far this year, there has been zero. Last year, there was one and the year before there was two. Rabies is basically on the decline, which is a good thing, um, in Sterling and in Massachusetts in general, it is on the decline. It is actually also reported in every state except Hawaii, just as kind of a fun fact. Hawaii is the only state that has never had a reported case of rabies, but every other state has. In what part of Massachusetts is rabies most common? It is most common in areas where there's a lot more warts Essex County, Franklin County, the Berkshires, way out there where there's a lot more wildlife, okay? Um, wildlife, you know, transmitting it to other wildlife, that's where you're going to have your major or your higher cases of rabies. What time of year are animals most likely to get bitten by a rabbit animal? The most common time of year is the spring. Wildlife is coming out of hibernation. Uh, they're looking for food, and wildlife is, they'll wander into your yards, go anywhere to get the food. So the spring is definitely the most active time and the most common time of year to get rabies in the spring. How can you tell if a wound on your pet is from a bite wound or another type of injury? That's a question we get all the time, and it really is not possible often to tell. Sometimes we can look and there are two distinct teeth marks, or four. Often, if it's a wound and the pet is running and gets bitten, there'll be a tear. If it's something that's abscessed and opened up, it's going to look like an open wound, not necessarily a bite. So there really is no way to know. That's why it's imperative. If you do see a wound on your pet, you call your veterinarian, make sure that your pet is up to date on vaccines, because the state actually doesn't care what the wound is from. If your pet is presents to the clinic, with a wound of unknown origin, which the state calls any wound of, we just don't know how it got there, they have to treat it and we have to treat it like it is a bite. So it's irrelevant what it looks like. If the pet has a wound, we have to determine the rabies status and treat it accordingly. About how many animals a year get rabies in Massachusetts? The state goes in quarters. For the first quarter um, of this year, there was 19 in the state of Massachusetts. The second quarter was 22. Um, so my estimate would be about 80 a year. What steps does a person have to take if their pet has a wound from a wild animal? First step, you do need to call your local veterinarian. Then your second step would be you call your local board of health. So when you bring your pet in to be evaluated, the state has very explicit laws of how we have to address these problems, regardless of the type of wound they're going to recommend likely some type of quarantine or a booster of the vaccine, depending on if your pet is vaccinated or not. Yeah. This is why I cannot stress them enough how important it is to have your dog or cat up to date on their rabies That's shots. Right. Remembering they're the barrier between us and rabies, so it's imperative that they're protected to keep us protected. And it's also important to remember these laws are in place to keep you and your family safe, not to make it difficult for you to own a pet. It's easy to own a pet if you keep them up to date and follow the rules, then you don't have to worry. Okay. Um, a pet that is up to date on shot, uh, rabies shots, which is real good, there is an automatic 45 day quarantine. And a rebooster. And a rebooster. Mm -hmm. uh, when you bring your pet in, there is a booster shot, they call it basically. Yeah. And then, but if your pet is not up to date on rabies, there is this automatic six month quarantine. At five months, they go in for a booster, okay, as long as there's no signs of being sick or rabid. Then at six months, they are released. And this is what state protocol requires. And I hate to say it, pop, especially when you get into a six month quarantine, possible euthan euthanasia. Rabies is such a serious 
disease, potentially, that the state, in fact, recommends if your pet is unvaccinated and has a wound of unknown origin, that you euthanize your pet, which is shocking and obviously horrible to even think about, but that's how worried they are that it might transmit rabies to you. If you decline that, which most people, of course, do, now you have to keep your pet in for six full months. Be careful who handles it. Lou will come or your particular animal control officer to determine that they're in an escape-proof building where they're not at risk to harm someone else. Could you describe the rabies vaccine? Sure. Um, in people, there's actually a pre-exposure vaccine. If you're in um, an occupation where it puts you at inherent risk for getting exposed. So if you're an animal control officer, if you're in the veterinary industry, if you work in a shelter, um, if you're a wildlife rehabilitator, those sorts of jobs that make you at particular risk for rabies, there's a pre-exposure vaccine. I have it, Lou has it. Oh. The vaccine in dogs, um, it's what's called a killed or an activated vaccine. It's very, very safe. It's nearly 100% effective. It's given initially after about 12 weeks of age. It's good for nine to 12 months. If you repeat that vaccine before it expires in 12 months, that second shot is good for three years, and so are the rest of the shots that the dog gets or cat the rest of its life. How much does the rabies vaccine cost? There is a range on that. In the spring when most dog licensing for each town, that's when they require, each year you need to license your dog. Um, that in the spring, they do offer, most towns in the area, low-cost rabies clinics. The range can be from anywhere from $10 to $15, depending on the towns. We try to keep it very affordable because we want to sort of promote rabies vaccination. We want to make it easy for people to do so. We sponsor a couple of clinics a year where people can come in and get an inexpensive rabies vaccine to protect their pet. Can animals still live out rabies even if they have the vaccine? The vaccine is very, very good and it's nearly 100% effective. So there really are no reported cases of pets that got rabies despite having the vaccine. The immunity is very good. In what ways can rabies be prevented? So there are a lot of ways that we can prevent rabies. As we talked about and probably the most important is vaccinate your pets. I can't overstate that. Um, other ways. Don't approach animals you don't know, especially wild animals. Don't feed wild or stray animals. Don't encourage them to come into your yard. Enjoy wildlife sort of from a distance. Um, make sure that any crevices in your home are boarded up so wild animals are less able to get into your home or bats. Teach children also to not approach animals that they don't know. Um, I think those are some easy ways that we can prevent rabies. Um, don't keep your garbage unattended outside. Don't leave it open. Make sure it's covered so that wild animals are less apt to come in your yard. Also spay and neuter your pets. Pets that are close to home are less likely to sort of roam and get into fights. Are there a lot of pet owners who educate on rabies, rabies vaccine, and the correct protocol? I think that it's always a constant um, battle for us to teach owners. We're always doing whatever we can to get the word out about rabies. I know in the clinic every day we're educating individual pet owners and then we try to have frequent information on our website. Um, every opportunity we get, it's very important that we get the word out, um, that people should get their, their pets vaccinated and to be safe. I think it's something that never ends. It's a constant process. I know, Lou. Yeah, as animal control officer at Sterling, I try, I do monthly newsletters, which are usually distributed around town. Um, they're on the Sterling uh, website, trying to educate the residents of Sterling, getting that information out there, just like Trish said, on rabies, you know, real important to get your, have your animals up to date on the rabies vaccines and other information, just trying to get people educated in this town. Something you, you just can't be complacent about. It's yes. just sort of a, a constant thing that we try to, to keep people informed about for sure. We hope you have learned a lot about rabies during this interview. We would like to thank Lou Massa, Dr. Detlinger, Matt and Chris at the Sterling Lancaster Cable TV, and folks here at Sterling Vet Clinic for all their help and for letting us use this building. So, please remember to get your pets vaccinated. Thank you.